Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. For today's video, it's obviously a little bit different from what I usually upload. Um, if you can tell by the title, I am uploading a video on what they don't tell you about getting your gallbladder removed. I know it's very random to throw in here, but I did vlog a couple months ago that I had recently had my gallbladder removed and I never talked about the recovery process about how I actually ended up getting or the reasons why I needed gallbladder surgery so that's where this video is going to come in when I was told I needed gallbladder surgery I actually went here on YouTube and tried to look at videos about people talking about their experience obviously everybody's experience is different but I was mainly looking for their experience you know um, a few questions that I had like how long is it going to take to recover? Is it painful? All types of stuff. And I realized that I never really found anything. I did find people uploading like a process, like an animated process of how the surgery is done. But not really like the aftercare or what they tell you, Um, you know, once they remove your gallbladder. And I also did notice that I, when I uploaded that last vlog, um, telling you guys I had surgery, one, I obviously didn't talk about it enough, and two, I had um, a couple comments asking about my surgery and talking about it, so I feel kind of bad that I was never notified about those comments, otherwise I would, like, be writing back to you guys, so that's why I kind of wanted, kind of wanted to do this video. So, if you are currently going to get your gallbladder removed, if you are recovering from gallbladder surgery, and you're kind of, you know curious as to what how like how my experience went then keep watching I did make a list of things that I want to talk about in th this video so if you want to see my experience how I or the reason why I got my gallbladder removed then just keep watching I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the symptoms that I had prior to surgery so um I started to realize maybe Four years ago, every time I would eat something spicy, something deep fried, something um, not that's not healthy, my stomach would always burn. I would get like a stomach, I'm not sure if you could see this, I would get a stomach. I would get a stomach pain in my stomach and it would travel up to my upper back. I never knew what it was and every time I would research it they would just be like oh it's an upset stomach and all types of things so I would like down bottles of Pepto and nothing worked okay so as you saw I got a phone call so I had to stop recording I don't remember the last thing I said but I'm gonna start off with the symptoms the flare-up I guess is what they called it so every time I would eat anything you know that's not healthy I would get those stomach pains I would feel burning it would burn so bad in my stomach and then I would feel like a pain going up towards my back and it felt like not a pain where somebody hits you and it feels like it hurts it feels very sore and uncomfortable it feels like your back is very tense but just in that one spot so um I would drink the Pepto and then I would have to rush to the bathroom and make myself throw up and then the pain would kind of go away, but it was still there. So the process of me trying to um, kind of, how would I say it? Like the process of me trying to like make this pain go away, I would drink some Pepto, give it five minutes, go to the bathroom, throw up, come back, drink more Pepto, and I would stay up for hours and for some odd reason every time I would eat like let's say I had tacos like at Del Taco or Jack in the Box tacos or something that wasn't healthy I would be fine but then it always happened like the pain I always felt that pain around maybe 2 3 a.m. and I would stay up to like 4 4 30 a.m. just with this pain and then eventually I would just go to like fall asleep and then wake up like nothing so that was kind of like my routine I would just take Pepto throw up take more Pepto stay up with the soreness and the back pain because I am a side sleeper so um, I sleep on my right side so that was the side that would hurt so every time like I would get that pain I couldn't lay on my right side because it would just 
feel very sore and tense so I would be flip flopping around I would sit down and I would be bawling my eyes out like it was the most painful thing ever I would always end up crying I hate throwing up so I would be crying from throwing up and crying because of the pain so I was up all night crying with pain and whatever so then um those were my that was like my little routine so one time I ended up going to the ER and I was like I'm having this pain I don't know what it is I've been having it for two days straight like I remember one time I can't even remember what I eat so I can't tell you guys but I went to the ER I checked in and I'm like I'm having this pain so then um, the doctor saw me and he was like it's your gallbladder like those are symptoms of like your gallbladder flaring up we're gonna give you guys we're gonna give you um, a ultrasound and we're gonna go from there so I stayed there a couple hours later um, I get the ultrasound done and the ultrasound technician told me that they were gallstones I for some reason was like never I never pinpointed it because I don't my mom suffers from gallstones but I never really hear her talking about it like she just I believe she pees them out like hers aren't that big enough um, and um, she was just like yeah you have gallstones so I was like okay I've never heard of that I've never seen anybody suffer from like that pain in my family so I went home I mean, the doctor saw me again, and he was like, go to your regular doctor, um, your primary doctor. He's going to uh, see you, and then he's going to refer you to a surgeon if he thinks it's needed. I go, I leave the ER. I'm like, okay, I went to, um, I made an appointment to my primary doctor. He was, it was a, for me, it was the first time seeing him, so I honestly believe he, it was like, the biggest bullshit doctor ever I think like he's just one of those doctors that wants to take your money because he saw me and he is just like okay yeah it's your gallbladder here's some pain medication that's it um, they took blood work and he called me back a couple like a week later and he was just like I need to see you like you know we need to talk face to face I'm like oh shit like that's pretty serious I go in and he was just like you are showing signs of pre-diabetes but we're not really sure if that's what it is we're gonna need to take more blood from you and take that to get tested and if it comes back we're gonna go f like showing that you do have um, pre-diabetes we'll go from there but he wasn't like it's pre-diabetes we need to like for sure sit you down and we need to talk about this he was just like you're showing some signs of maybe being pre-diabetic we're not really sure if it is or not but I need this much money and your blood and we're gonna figure it out I went home and I'm like screw that I'm not gonna go back to this doctor he told me nothing he I waited maybe um, 45 minutes and he saw me for a good five minutes that was it didn't let me ask any questions um, he just rushed the process and was like come back if you want to get your blood taken out um, I suggest you do it this and that I for sure never went back because I'm sure at the hospital they test you for everything so if I was pre-diabetic, they would have told me. I mean, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure that's the reason why they take blood from you. And then um, they not once told me that I'm showing signs of pre-diabetes. I had to open my window up because it looked a little dark in here. So it, hopefully the lighting looks good. So I never went back to that doctor. And then maybe about a month later, yeah, like about a month, I went out to Korean barbecue and I was fine and then um, the next day my stomach started hurting and I told my ex-boyfriend at that time I was like hey um, I think I need to go to the hospital I'm not feeling too good so he's like that's fine I'm at work I can't do much like I will leave as soon as I can and meet you up um my sister Jasmine ended up driving me there and I was like I was here last month they told me it was gallstones I went to see my primary doctor he was basically shit so now I'm back again with the pain and it's even worse. By this time, when I went into the hospital this second time, I had already been with the gallbladder pain for two days straight. Um, the throat wasn't helping. I was throwing up probably two or three times um, throughout the day and night. So throwing up wasn't helping. Pepto wasn't helping. 
eating healthy wasn't helping at this point I wasn't even eating anything just so I could avoid the pain of my gallbladder and my back so um, they did do um, oh no that's right so I checked into the hospital July 17th is when I went the second time and they're like okay you know sit down we're gonna go through your blood work a little bit more and then take more um, look more into your ultrasound sorry so I was like okay so I waited and then they put me back in the room and they're like you're not leaving this hospital <laughs> and I was like what and the nurse was like we're gonna leave you overnight you'll most likely need surgery you're gonna get you're gonna get surgery either tonight July 17th or tomorrow morning you're gonna like one between today and tomorrow you're gonna end up with surgery I was for some reason not scared at all I was like perfect like we know what it is let's get this over with I am ready to get rid of this pain so she was like before we do all that and actually like you know admit you into a room um, we're gonna have to take an MRI we're gonna do more blood tests with an ultrasound I was like fine do whatever you gotta do I'm whatever like I'm fine my life is in your hands now like I'm ready so that day I spoke to the surgeon she was telling me about the surgery um, how long the surgery was gonna take she said I will book you in tomorrow morning so I actually got surgery done July 18th and I admitted myself to the hospital around 12 p.m. she's like you're here now once you are admitted to the hospital and you know we have you ready for surgery you can no longer eat nothing you can't drink water you can't eat so could you imagine I was like relieved but also in pain and starving all at once I am a person if I don't eat hell breaks loose so I was trying to stay as calm as possible like I couldn't even drink water so I was like okay cool um so I was admitted into the hospital July 17th and then um, they did everything they let me see yeah so that same afternoon I got an ultrasound done so I was like hey I asked the, it was the same ultrasound technician and I was like hey I was here last time like are do I have a lot of gallstones and she's like well cuz I I figured like every time I've never had a ultrasound done or seen anybody get an ultrasound done, but I feel like every time they do like the ultrasound and they click to take the picture, I feel like that's what, like there's obviously something, you know, they're taking a picture of. So she was clicking it for a while and I'm like, is there, do I have like a lot of gallstones? And she's like, um, did I show you last time? And I was like, no. So she showed me the screen. The first thing I see is like this big old rock thing. And I'm like, holy shit. She's like, yeah, you have four gallstones, four big gallstones. And one of them is blocking the airway where your food goes into and it gets broken down into. So she's like, that's the reason why we're keeping you in here because it's kind of dangerous. She's like, if that um, gallstone breaks up and falls into your intestine, it could eventually rip your intestine and you're going to need a major surgery. She's like, so that's why we're kind of like trying to rush the process. So she showed me the gallstones. They looked huge. And then I was like, okay, so we did that. The surgeon comes back into my room, tells me you have four gallstones. They're pretty big. They're like big on the, they're pretty large on their size. She kind of compared them to almost <clears throat> a golf ball. So um, that's all they did that on July 17th. On July 18th is when I had the surgery. A nurse comes in and tells me you're going to have surgery around 12 p.m. so be prepared I was like okay cool like I was ready to get her over with I did not have surgery <laughs> until I want to say actually I can't even remember I want to say 3 30 is when they were they came in and they're like okay we're ready for you for surgery so before that like I had a whole bunch of um Nurses come in, take my blood. Uh, I went to go get an MRI done while waiting for surgery. My surgery time to come up. So I had all that done. I Honestly, I don't know. They just like checked everything like my blood. They kept checking my pressure. Um, so they did all that. And then 3.30. If I'm going to ask my mom once again what time I actually had surgery. And I will leave it up here on the screen. But I'm pretty sure it was around 3.30. 
And um, around, when that came, they're like, okay, we're ready for you. So I go and I get, um, you know, dressed. And then um, it was weird because it was just like this giant room of rooms. <laughs> I don't know how it was. It looked, from what I remember, it looked like a lab because um, they pushed me in in the bed obviously but then there's like different surgery rooms so they pushed me into one um i transferred from my bed where i was at to like the surgery table so i just remember him putting something in my av and he's like close your eyes you're gonna be fine um think of a happy place so i closed my eyes boom right away i knocked out no 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 complications i didn't feel any pain I didn't hear anything, um, so I don't know what the heck they did or whatever, but, um, yeah, that was that. I had surgery, and then I ended up in the recovery room. I woke up. I was fine, and holy crap, you guys, after that, I felt so good. I was in no pain. I felt nothing. Well, obviously, I still had, like, the anesthesia in me, so I <laughs> felt no pain, no nothing, just very uncomfortable from being, like, from laying down all day for two days because once they like stick the IV in you, you cannot move. Like it's very painful, uncomfortable. So um, I was just very sore. My butt was sore. My flat ass, you know, was just. Pfft. If I didn't have an ass going to surgery, I for sure didn't have one leaving surgery because I was just in my back laying down for so long that I just felt more uncomfortable than pain. I had to put my brightness up a little bit because of the time changed today. <laughs> and man, it might as well just stay dark 24-7. So anyways. I'll do it like that. Once I got out of surgery, everything was fine. I had the nurses come in and check up on me often. I did, unfortunately, get um, a fever. I'm not sure if that's a symptom or not, but... Once I woke up from surgery, I instantly started sweating like a whore in church. Drenched in sweat, like I don't know what it was or why that happened, but I guess it's just like the, um, what do you call it? One of the symptoms, I guess some people get either really cold or really hot and start sweating. So I thankfully was a person who started sweating because I hate feeling cold. Like I feel like if I get so cold, I feel like crying. But, um, I just started sweating and sweating and sweating all night, unfortunately. Like, unfortunately, like I said, I did get a fever. Um, thankfully they were able to control it. So, when it was time for them to release me, they gave me, like, a list of things I could and couldn't do. Um, obviously the first one they tell you is you can't lift anything heavier than 30 pounds for the first two weeks. Let me actually give you guys a list of like how it went. So, um, recovery from recovering from surgery is usually two weeks minimum, um, depending on yourself. I honestly took three weeks to recover because um, I did do a lot of lifting at work. So I took an extra week just to be sure. And I am just a paranoid person. So I'm like, what if my guts fall out? Like that was my whole thought throughout this whole um recovery process like I would go to the bathroom and I'm like if I push too hard my gut is gonna fall out like something's gonna go wrong I'm gonna have to need more surgeries so I mean it's just the weirdo in me that kept thinking that but don't worry it doesn't happen so two weeks is the minimum um recovery because I know a lot of people go to work just fine two weeks later I couldn't do any heavy lifting. I was on a strict diet while recovering, even after I finished recovering. Um, I had to have, I was on a pure liquid diet for the two weeks. My nurse told me, like, make sure you don't have anything fatty, um, nothing greasy, nothing that came from an animal, which sucked because it's kind of hard. I'm like, I'm Mexican. We fry a lot. Not really, but like our, the way we cook, it's like, it's not the healthiest. So she told me, make sure you have nothing of that. I, for the longest time, was craving mashed potatoes throughout my whole surgery recovery. I was craving mashed potatoes. I couldn't eat that because the potatoes bloated me. I couldn't eat pho, which is my favorite thing ever because obviously the, um, what do you call it? 
the stew is beef so um no chicken my battery died the sun is going down i just had to basically swallow a quesadilla because i was starving so let's continue this so the last thing i think recorded was me talking about the diet so i mean i'm pretty sure you guys kind of get the idea of the diet i was put on i'm pretty sure they do this for everybody just so they could avoid you could avoid like any inflammation in the stomach anything like that but just know it's not that hard as it seems the first couple of days i had no appetite i was like i want nothing but water gatorades um jello light things like that and then maybe within that same week but a couple days afterwards i was like okay well i'm kind of craving a little bit of grilled chicken a little bit of rice a salad like slowly your appetite starts coming back so i suggest just like the first maybe three or four days um i s probably just would stay away from like solid foods because as soon as you eat anything even now um as soon as you eat anything some you are gonna directly go to the restroom and poop it all out <laughs> i don't want to say that but you are gonna suffer with diarrhea um even till now like i said i still do it i still do it i still get it um it probably should have gone away within the first month but just depending what i eat um i am also lactose so if i do have some dairy i do realize and notice that i go to the bathroom right away but with um throughout time you'll notice that it'll start to disappear i still am um a little bit on with that like i still suffer a little bit from it but not as i did the first two weeks also, um, they will tell you do not drive. There's no way in hell you could drive anywhere. I tried driving a week. Like once you start getting your energy back, you think that you'll be able to go back and do whatever, but it's not. Like don't do that. Like take full on rest. Um, because I drove uh, maybe a couple days before I hit my two week um, recovery time. And... It wasn't it. I live five minutes away from a Rite, Aid, a Rite Aid, if anything, and it took me quite a while to get there just because I was very uncomfortable having to get, you know, into like a comfortable position again from laying down basically all day. It's kind of hard. So ease your way into it. I don't know why I wanted to rush into it, but I guess I was just bored of being home. So there was that. Let's see what else I could give you guys. Um... So I'm going to go in with aftercare symptoms, like not aftercare symptom, symptoms, but after surgery symptoms that um, <clears throat> you will get. Um, they do tell you, this goes back to the diet, they do tell you to stay on a strict diet because you can eventually create, not create, but um, develop a fatty liver, which is not the business. You don't want to get a fatty liver because I'm not sure if they do surgery for it or you're just you just go downhill from that but they do tell you be careful with what you eat this is the reason why we're putting you on a diet you don't want to um, develop a fatty liver because it's just as worse so um you will feel a lot of comfortableness like i said you will um, but eventually like throughout the days you will find spots that are um, very comfortable for you um i had four incis incisions done i'll get into that in a little bit but let me finish this up you will get diarrhea, you will get bloating, you will feel bloating and swelling in the face, at least for me. The first day out of surgery, I felt it. I felt very swollen, like my face felt bloated and swollen. My mom said as well, I felt my lips like very out there and then it went away and then a couple days later, I felt swollen again. Like I would wake up randomly like in the morning and my face, I could just tell right away that it was swollen. Um... So I'm not sure if it just happens with some people or with everybody, but that's what I, um, that was a symptom that I got. Um, you will be out of breath. This one is a big one, you guys. I felt like I would, I was running miles and miles and miles and miles just to get from my living room to the bathroom. It usually should be no less than 10 steps or no more than 10 steps. And I couldn't 
make it to the bathroom fast enough. I felt like I was never going to get to the restroom. Um, the first week, I was not able to wipe myself. I was not able to shower by myself. Um, so I would have to, I, I have like a step in shower. So I would have to shower in my mom's bathroom who just, thankfully she just has like a walk-in shower. So that was easy. Um, the restroom, the first couple, like the first week, I want to say it was very difficult because I did have an incision on my side stomach that would kill me like crazy. And then, um, you're feeling fine and you will have times, at least I did, where I broke down crying because I felt so useless. Just getting up from the couch and sitting down was the biggest problem for me. I don't know what it was. I guess it's because I'm used to like doing things on my own that relying on somebody else's help sucks for me. So, um, just getting up and moving around and then, um, sitting down was just a pain. I broke down probably throughout my whole recovery by myself at night because it was just a pain in the ass. It was, I've never gone through any pain like this before. It was new to me, but I was crying because I had to rely, like I couldn't do anything for myself. I wasn't crying because I was in pain. So there was that. There is an annoying cough that you will develop as well. Um, I had to go get it checked out because I suffer from bronchitis. Uh, so I had to go get it checked out, but it was just the anesthesia coming out. As soon as you um, are probably two hours after surgery somebody will come in i mean there's gonna be people coming in constantly checking up on you but um at least at my hospital i'm not sure if it's different in other places but they did give me like a breathing tube not a breathing tube but a thing to take home to help me breathe because you're supposed to be coughing out the anesthesia um every time i would cough i would like kneel over it and i would just be like <laughs> they weren't full on like <coughs> coughs because I couldn't put any pressure on my stomach they were just like little <laughs> little annoying baby coughs and they tell you that you should be coughing often because you need to get the anesthesia out otherwise it could clog up I don't know what inside of you so um when they tell you to cough make sure you cough um don't ignore that and um I did get a little bit of pain mainly discomfort but like I said it was sometimes painful to sit on the toilet to you push to use the restroom to get up and you know move around I'm not saying there's no pain at all there is a little bit of pain and like I said I did break down crying once in a while because I had to rely on other people to do things for me Coming to an end on the video so I do want to quickly give you guys an update where I'm at now so I am two wait July August September October November three or so months post-op three going on to four months post-op and I want to give you guys a little bit of symptoms that I still get to this day so like I said I still somewhat not fully but once in a while do suffer from diarrhea I get hella heartburn <laughs> um you they could prescribe you medication for your heartburn um I don't take any because I'm just like used to it by now but I do suffer from heartburn any little thing gives me heartburn pizza sauce um mole birria I had birria for my birthday party not too long ago I suffered with heartburn forever and a bad hangover but um I suffered through heartburn for that I can't have any like lemon a, a lot of lemon makes me get heartburn as well anything any every little thing I'm pretty sure everybody's different but every little thing gives me heartburn um there are some things that I'm just like thank god I don't have heartburn but Barbecue sauce doesn't give me heartburn, neither does buffalo, neither does Valentina sauce. So I'm kind of like, okay, cool. Um, there are things that you have to eat throughout this process that you will either no longer like, you will no longer taste the same. I remember for the longest time, um, chicken did not taste the same after surgery because I did have to eat a lot of pan fried um, chicken without any oil no salt no pepper no seasoning it was just a dry chicken breast so now i look at chicken and i'm like crap i don't want that anymore <laughs> but i don't eat a lot of red meat i prefer chicken so i stick with that i just make sure to add extra seasoning and once i'm done i douse it in chile so i don't taste the chicken so food no longer tastes the same to me also um my weight this is pretty good i guess my weight has been steady since um surgery i would weigh myself and i did lose 10 pounds 
I feel like I have not gained the 10 pounds back, but obviously um, my stomach is back to where it should be. So I am still like, you know, I still have my gut, but I feel like I have not gained or lost any weight. So my weight has been steady since surgery, which I'm not sure if um, it happens to everybody, but um, I have had a steady weight since then. So I'm happy about that. A downside though is I feel like I don't get full enough and by this I mean I will eat something and then I'm like I'm not full like I want to keep eating and eating and eating because obviously nothing is breaking down your food and storing it or anything so it's just going right through you so um it kind of sucks because I'm like we have dinner and then I'm just like I'm not full but I don't want to eat because then They'll be like, man, like, you're eating again type of thing. So it's just more of a me thing. Like, I could eat all I want. My family is not like, wow, stop eating. But, you know, it's like I need to control myself because I feel like if I just keep eating, I'm going to get into a, that habit of not feeling full. So I'm going to keep eating. So I do make sure to eat um, three full meals throughout the day and snack in between, like, regardless of what it is. Um, so there's that. And yeah, that's basically it on what I could remember from surgery. Obviously, don't forget, this is just my personal experience. Everybody has different recovery times, different, you know, um, symptoms. So what I felt is just me personally. It doesn't mean you're going to go through like pain, swelling, anything like that. I'm just giving you guys like... A quick update as to how my surgery went because like I said I feel like I found nothing really online um, Google wasn't help at all neither was YouTube there are videos but like I said um, there are only videos on how the surgery is done and now that I think about it I forgot to mention my incisions so I do have four incisions I'm not sure if I will be if you will be able to see them there's a tiny one right here here and here this is the biggest one I have because that's where they remove your gallbladder so I have one on my belly button I did have a scar previously to um, having my belly button pierced I took it out and it's scarred so right below that belly button scar I do have another scar it's not very visible but um, I know it's there because obviously like they told me about it and then the top one which let me show you guys this is the best my camera is going to do for me. So this one right here is the biggest one I have. This is another one. And I do have one the size of this one as well. But like way down here that I'm not going to be able to show you guys. Or unfortunately the belly button one. Um, But yeah, those are the scars that I have. And like I said, I'm not sure if the scarring or like the amount of incisions you have is different on each person. But the incision I have on my belly button, they made that because they shove a camera up your stomach so they could see what's going on. The biggest scar I showed you guys is where they remove the gallbladder. And then the ones on the side, the ones that you weren't really able to see, I believe that's where they insert... Um, what is it that they insert? I'm pretty sure they insert something where they, like, maybe a little scalpel where they cut open your incisions to remove the rocks, like the gallstones. I'm not really sure, but those are there. You could always Google it yourself and see what they are. So with that being said, you guys, don't forget that every uh, surgery symptom and things like that will be different depending on your surgeon depending on yourself your hospital i don't know things like that but just know at the end of the day the surgery is done within maybe 10 15 minutes so you have nothing to worry about if you have oh, my camera kept dying because i needed to obviously charge it so um i'm gonna go ahead and do the outro like this hopefully you guys don't mind and hopefully it turns out how I hope it does but if you guys have any more questions for me or any concerns please leave them down in the comments below for don't forget that every surgery will go depending on your surgeon um, on your recovery time and everything like that everything that I mentioned is obviously different for everybody so don't think that you're gonna have a difficult um, you know two month recovery thing because that's not the case if anything, the surgery probably probably takes no longer than 20 minutes, 
I was in and out within, I believe, 15 minutes. Yeah, so um, don't worry. There's nothing to worry about. It is the best thing um, you could ever do, honestly, because even though your life doesn't go back to being completely normal because like I said at least for me because I do still suffer from heartburn a little bit of diarrhea eventually down the line everything will be fine so don't be scared if they tell you you need to get your gallbladder removed because it is the best decision I ever made even though I really had no option because I did have to have a surgery I mean an emergency surgery because one gallstone was blocking the airway I still probably would have done it regardless if it wasn't there. So don't worry, you'll be fine. Um, like I said, if you have any more questions for me, leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Um, also turn on your bell notifications so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. And with that being said, you guys, thank you guys all so much for watching. I will talk to you guys in the next video.